guys. What's up? We're coming at you today. We're uh, about a year into the old Nutter Busters YouTube channel and uh, just wanted to kind of do a recap. I know last year uh, the video that kind of started the channel was my saddle hunting, like my full setup overview. Uh, so I kind of wanted to revisit that. We're winding down with hunting season. We've only got 10 more days left. Um, so just wanted to kind of go over the gear I've been using this year. I've been using a lot of different gear. I've been using the kite. I've been using uh, JX3. I've been using a trophy line tree saddle. been hunting on the ground some. I climbed with sticks. I climbed with squirrel steps. I climbed with bolts. Um, really been kind of hard to, to pick one. But uh, the setup that I'm going to show with you today is actually kind of two setups. Um, and they've kind of they've been the ones that this season I've kind of gravitated towards, you know, and on the days when I'm just tired and my brain ain't running and I just want to get out in the woods and hunt. Uh, this has been the stuff that I've been using. Um, we'll just kind of jump into it. The first thing is while I love that little Badlands Silent Reaper pack, this year more and more I've been running without a pack. Uh, we don't have a lot of cold days down here. Right now, here we are, first day of February. It's like 50-something degrees. I think the coldest I've hunted in this year was like i think we had one day where the wind chill was like in the lower teens it was mid 20 temps usually cold down here is 30 degrees so that's not that bad you can tough that out with you know just your regular clothes and a and a good good jacket good windbreaker and covering your ears and your hands and all that jazz um and i don't really carry a lot of gear with me so i've just been carrying wearing my saddle set up in mostly and then um you know, if I, if I kill a deer, I've either been going back to dragging it out, if it's short, if it's 100 yards, you know, to get it back somewhere. Um, I've had some kills like that where it's 100 yards to get it to a boat or get it to a paved road that you can drive. Um, otherwise, I'll go back and I'll get a pack. I've been keeping that same pack in my truck, and when I get back, I can cut them up and pack them out. That's what I did uh, with that six point that I cleaned and, and showed kind of how I clean and process deer in the fields but so we'll look at the saddle first um i did over the summer i sold my size one kestrel when i bought a size two kite when i was at saddle palooza last year um that was the saddle that really stood out to me as just the absolute most comfortable um i did not care for the manis uh, the trophy line's a good saddle um but i'm a little bit more comfortable in this the kite's very much a minimalist saddle um i have put a doors hoist on it because I'm a huge fan of a doors. That's about the only um, luxury item that I carry. I just, just about won't climb a trail without a doors. Um, I have a trophy line pouch because trophy line still is in the business of making the best saddle pouches that are out there, I think. Um, and then I have my lineman's belt. We'll kind of go over all those components. Uh, everything that's on the saddle. So the doors is easy. I always just put a vet wrap uh, silenced carabiner on there that i can you know clip into the whatever i'm hauling up um lineman's belt is actually this is kind of a do as i say not as i do moment because i am using it out of spec with an eight millimeter rope i switched to oplux um i had a gentleman I'm trying to remember his name mm, i'll have to apologize to him but it's saddle plaza he turned me on to eight millimeter rope i started using it um, and then I got the Oplux stuff just because it's kind of a neutral camouflage color. But I'm using a Ropeman 1 on it, which is out of spec. And then the carabiner that I'm using is a really cool little carabiner I just recently found. Um, that is a Petzl SMD. I'm going to hold it off to the side so maybe you can see it. And then this is just a regular old Black Diamond Positron. So you can see it's about the same size, but it's an auto locker. Just twist and squeeze really been happy with that 20 bucks on amazon can't go wrong auto locker on a lineman's belt is just nice you know because sometimes you got to unclip it throw it back around the tree um and this also works nice this is kind of my setup i use as a deer drag if i need to um in this pouch so i'm either carrying one or two things so either i'm carrying all four of my straps to go on my long wolf custom gear sticks and we'll get to that in a minute that's on top, rolled up nice and neat. Or, um, if I'm climbing with bolts, which is still my preferred climbing method, then I'm carrying my little roll of bolts. Y'all have seen this, just Allen's cartridge belt, holds on my carbon bolts. 
And then at the bottom, I'll hold these up a little closer. That's just a regular old, you can see the paint's wearing off where I've stepped on it. But that's just a grade 8 uh, Allen bolt with a piece of heavy duty marine grade uh, shrink tubing on it just to keep it kind of quiet. And I've actually been using three of those as kind of my platform once I get up to height. Um, I've just been putting one for each foot to go on, one off to the side, and I have found that that's really all I need to hunt. Um, you know, especially if I'm only hunting for, you know, five hours or less. That's very easy. All that fits very nicely into that pouch, right? See, it sticks out the top a little bit, but that and my lineman's belt, this is all that I wear in, and that's all that I need to get up in a tree and hunt, you know, 30 foot off the ground if need be. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to climb with, but super sweet little system. The bolt drill is the, the tree hopper mini. Hands down, prefer it over anything else I've tried. Prefer it over the easy cut. Prefer it over the, the full size. If you get one, spend the extra pesos. Get the folding handle. Thing ain't big as a pocket knife. It's awesome. And then I'm climbing on carbon bolts. I got steel bolts to stand on just because, uh, you know, you're on them for so much longer. And you might potentially be tip loading them as you position around the tree for a shot. So, in this setup, this little bitty setup right here. Combined with JX3 is pretty gosh awful lightweight and comfortable. Um, we're going to be doing a video on the JX3 too at some point. It, it deserves its own separate video. Um, next up on the list, packs next in the pack. So once I've climbed, right, so I've either got the straps that go on my climbing sticks or I have, uh, you know, my bolt and my drill. So once you get up to height and you got your platform set and everything like that, of course, you need to set your tether. So this is my tether system that I run. This is just a piece of sewn uh, one inch tubular webbing. That's my loop that I'm passing everything through the girth hitch once I get up to height. Come up a little closer to the camera. I've done a video on this before. That's my Austria Alpen uh, quick release ring. And then I do not like having to step through um, a, a, a bridge uh, when I'm wearing, you know, muddy boots or hip waders and I'm standing in a little bit of water hunting. You can see the river behind me. Um, I hunt around a lot of water. So those are just two uh, Grivel Plume uh, G's, I believe. It's just a double wire gate. So it's a locking wire gate carabiner. So they're very light, no bulk, pack up nicely. And when I get to the top of the tree, that's what I'm tethering in with. Works nicely. And at the very bottom of the pack, once I'm tethered in, of course, I gotta have a gear strap. This is just a piece of one inch webbing with a cam buckle on it. Um, and then what I've been using are just these Molly clips. You can get them from good old Dano. You see those just fold off. You can clip a jacket. Uh, I'm not clipping a pack anymore, so usually I'm just clipping a jacket or a quiver or whatever. And then on the other end, I'm clipping either my my gun or my hickory creek mini um and actually usually for my gun i just lay that across my bridge so on a on a gun hunt you know like say i was going to go hunting uh this morning or like i hunted yesterday uh up at the least this is all i'm carrying i've got my gun in my hand i've got my jacket strapped around my waist just tied around my waist like i'm you know a sorority girl in college and uh the pockets hold my, you know, my compass, uh, my headlamp, and, you know, bug spray if it's early season. That's about all that I really need. I've been getting by carrying the little bit of gear I want with me in pockets. I don't film or anything. Um, so all that packs up. Very nice and neat. Um, and it all goes in in a particular order so I can kind of reach this tall pouch. I just, as I need something, it always ends up being on top of the pouch. Works very, very well. Um, so, wet my whistle. Uh, clear off my space a little bit. I'm just going to set this to the side. And start talking. 
like lone wolf custom gear platform and the mini sticks this has been my go-to public legal method if there's somewhere i'm hunting where i can't drill bolts or if i just don't feel like drilling that day uh like at my lease i hunt a lot of pines and last year and this year um in the years before i have drilled pines and you can totally drill a pine you just have to go back home and clean all your stuff um, but if you don't feel like cleaning your stuff these are nice don't get you 15 foot off the ground but i've killed eight deer two hogs and a coyote this year and i ain't climbed even with bolts over 15 feet this year it's kind of been a big experiment for me to see how low i can get away with hunting uh you probably shot you know the two bucks that i shot this year um i killed both of them about 12 foot off the ground so uh, both of those were rifle kills, but I've made several bow kills at, at those heights. Um, definitely got to be on your A game being nice and still. But the, uh, let's see if I can put this on without getting out of the camera frame. And this is kind of the reason that I started going packless because this system works really, really well if you don't have a pack. You just sling that on your back. put our saddle on you can see the way i've got this saddle modified again do as i say not as i do saddles should come with leg loops on them i choose to cut them off um, and then i've just got a two inch buckle because it's not really going to be that's not going to be load bearing really the loop that goes around the back side of it is what holds your load holds your weight in case you fall so with that set up right there i'm pretty much ready to rock put my uh See if I can remember what hit my lineman's belt goes on. I'm still just daisy chaining my lineman's. I've found that to be just kind of the easiest way to do it. I don't have to carry a pouch separate for it. And that's pretty, you can see it goes pretty quickly just to daisy chain that lineman's up. And then you can see now we're using that nice twist lock. And then the straps, all that I do is just kind of fold them. Like if I was climbing back down a tree, I'd already have my gear hanger. I'd have my tether in there. And just as I come down, I'm just kind of cramming them in there. You would think they would get tangled, but that has not been my experience. So that will go in there nice and neat. Then I'm actually wearing my jacket that I would wear on a not-so-cold day. Let's see what we can do. So yeah, you can see with that pack on my back, um, if I need to, I can strap a jacket to it. But that's all it disappears when I'm facing you. It's below the tops of my shoulders. It's inside my chest. And then it doesn't hang down so low that it hangs between my legs. Very nice, neat, easy setup. Pivot down for a little bit for you. Get the old crotch view. That's everything I need. Lineman's belt looped up right there. Cole's hoist right there where I can get to it. As soon as I would get up to the base of the tree, all that you're doing is just clipping, you know, whatever you need. Uh, take this off to get the sticks off of it. Start climbing a tree. Lineman's belt's right here. Straps are right here for when you need them. Um, that has been my setup for the year. And it's even easier, you know, like I said, if I'm not using the Long Wolf Custom Gear setup, then all that extra room in that pouch that the straps take up, you just take them out. This goes right up in there. And I'm telling you, when it comes to the mobile hunting at that point, I need a camera person. That's it. Uh, that's everything I need. I can put in cargo pockets or my, my jacket pockets. I can put a headlamp, skeeter spray, compass, whatever. This is my whole tree stand. You give me a bow or a rifle, I'm good to go. Um, sometimes if that's, like if I'm in a bunch of briars or something, you just take the bottom half of that kite and you just kind of, see if I can get to it, you just kind of tuck it back in on itself up top. Just keep it from dragging. 
then it's kind of more like a like a waist belt and you can walk like that for miles and miles you can throw this in the back of a canoe kayak uh, if you want to you could put that in a pack but that is hands down the most lightweight setup i have found and then the lone wolf custom gear stuff um not necessarily the lightest not necessarily the most compact but um i'll talk about this more in a separate video this whole setup what's really nice about this sticks are awesome to climb with they're very easy uh you know low amount of effort that you're expending they're kind of intuitive and natural um but they suck to pack the only way to me they've ever made sense to pack is on like a tree stand where you can keep them in a very very flat profile so you can see that's a side profile of this just the stand of two sticks it's just a couple of inches um and it keeps everything they stay really nice and tight if you wrap them the way that they tell you to if you've watched the videos with cody de Quisto, um and then i've had some conversations actually with mr brad coonert about how he does his stuff um and then I kind of base, I'm basically just packing it the way they tell you to. There's no fancy secrets or anything. Um, two on each side. You can see the strap goes across. I got me a yak grips covering up that buckle. And then I take the excess and I wrap it. So that what I'm doing is I'm holding those sticks together. And I'm also pinching that, uh, that standoff right there. That top bracket is actually pinching those sticks down into the platform. So that whole setup... And if I hold the strap still so that they're not rattling, easier said than done. There's no metal noise. You can walk for miles and miles. That's not going anywhere. Uh, and then, once you get up in the tree, um, I can be comfortable on a ring of bolts all day with a pair of knee pads. That's the other thing I don't have in there. It's the same Arc'teryx knee pads I was using last year's. I'm a knee pads guy. But, if you're going to be hunting... Like last weekend, I went up to Barber County WMA, uh, killed a couple pigs, seen a real nice buck up there. But uh, it was a rut hunt. Right now, we're in the middle of the rut here in South Alabama. I was hunting hard, and I hunted like 14 hours the first day, 14 hours the second day, and then the third day I had to go home, but I still put it right at 8 hours in a tree. It was there at 4 a.m. Didn't leave, um, you know, until 12, because you're, you're getting there so early. You're getting there two hours before the sun comes up. Uh, I was waking up at like 2.30 in the morning, getting out of my, you know, my tent and trying to beat the other 500 people that were hunting this 30,000 acre track of public land. You know, it's very heavily hunted public land. Uh, when you're doing stuff like that, doing it multiple days in a row, I do have to say my experiences with other platforms have not been that great. But that big honking platform just wide enough you can spread your feet, that, that's pretty nice. Um, I'm not, I would be lying if I said I'm 100% happy uh, with the little things. You know, there's some rough machining in there, or some rough water jetting. Um, the finish on the sticks isn't great, but I don't know if you can see, but like that strap, that, that discoloration, that's blood. I got blood up in my grooves here. There's mud and blood all over this thing from a busy season of killing stuff. Uh, like I said, so far we still got 10 days in the season, and I'm at 8 deer, 2 hogs, and a coyote, um, plus a bunch of wood ducks and squirrels and all that, so, uh, the gear's been used hard, all of this gear has held up really well, um, and the long wolf custom gear stuff is expensive, but to me, um, next to clothes, you know, that's about the most important thing you can spend money on. A lot of people don't spend a lot of money on a gun or a bow, and you don't shoot it a handful of times every year you know you add it all up and you're actually using that weapon for a couple of minutes versus a stand you know you're in it for hours and hours i mean you figure 14 plus 14 plus 8 36 hours in three days um and then when i went to portland landing it was the same thing like we were in the woods me and my dad all day because that's what it takes to you know to make it happen um but yeah this is kind of my whole overview basically the theme for this year was just simplifying an already simple system, uh, streamlining it a little bit further. Um, I think now, especially with this, give me that and a gun and the clothes I have to wear, and I'm good. You know, shove, shove a bottle of water in your pocket, shove a candy bar in there, 
and uh, just just rock on, you know, just just eat. That was the biggest thing was you know water, um, and you do need a small pack, a fanny pack or something, or just a small Camelback down here when it's 90 degrees in the early season. But once you get past you know Thanksgiving, Christmas, get past the holidays and really get up in the January rut where where your hard hunting happens. You just eat breakfast, and then you eat dinner, and then you just do without. And for me personally, that having a simple system like that, where I don't have to think about it, worry about it, pack a whole lot of stuff, I don't carry grunt calls or uh, scents or anything like that. I don't carry clippers because you really ain't supposed to be clipping on the public land to hunt anyway. You know, uh, I just need a flashlight and a uh, you know spare battery charger for my phone, mosquito spray if it's hot. I'm Pretty much good to go at that point. A couple of compasses so I don't get lost. I'll carry my cell phone, and that's kind of my backup light, my GPS, and everything. So, anyway, that is the overview. Um, just kind of celebrating the one-year anniversary. I want to thank the almost 1,800 people that have subscribed to watch some South Alabama redneck ramble on about his hunting stuff. Uh, thanks for all the the good times that we've had over the past year. Um, we're going to be doing some more exciting stuff this summer. i got a bow press I'm going to be going over. I'm going to be going over my duck hunting rig. Um, just going to be kind of branching out, talking more about small game hunting, waterfowl, squirrels, um, other stuff like that that interests me. And we might start doing just kind of a basic series for people who are brand new to hunting. I, I would Looking at it, I think most of the people who watch this channel, they're pretty experienced outdoorsmen. Um, but I want to do something to kind of kind of help mentor people who are new to it so we're going to do some videos it's kind of like the mossberg 500 video um you know just talking about like the first gun you should get if you're going to get into hunting um you know choosing a tree stand getting a, a cheap tree stand set up cheap and safe way to hunt um you know finding a place to hunt scouting a piece of property um that's why I did that deer cleaning video you know how to clean a deer how to do all these really basic things that if you don't have um, a mentor to teach you how to do these things in person the easiest way to learn how to do that is not reading a book or a magazine article it's watching somebody do it so we might do some videos on simple stuff like how to sharpen a pocket knife um, stuff like that how to pattern a shotgun how to sight in a rifle um, and then we're going to be doing I have a bow press so we're going to be doing some videos on how to work on your own equipment I'm big on that um, I like I modify a lot of my own gear I work on a lot of my own gear I don't like having to rely on somebody to fix my gear. Hunting is something that's tremendously important to me. I take it very, very seriously. I like knowing that all my stuff's going to work. You know, I tie my own knots, tune my own bow, sight in my own rifle, mount my own scope, because, you know, I just, I'll trust somebody else changed oil on my car. I'll trust somebody else maybe to cut my grass. But when it comes to hunting stuff, I want it done right. Um, and it's not hard to do. So we're going to be doing some more of that in the future. Like I said, keep keep tuned in. Appreciate all the support in the past. Keep watching the videos. Uh, we're coming out with some some exciting new stuff this summer. I haven't been doing a lot over the course of hunting season just because I've been busy hunting. But we got 10 days left, and then we'll do the turkey hunting thing for a little bit, and then all through the summer I'll be uh, hopefully back to cranking out these videos on a weekly basis. Um, but yeah, thanks for all of your support, and until next time, y'all be good.